Welcome back to our channel. This was how we previously left our controller model. We've got the two halves, and we've got quite a nice split along the middle. In this video, we are going to add some ribs to the top part, and in the next one, without the corresponding ribs to the bottom part. So let's open this top part by clicking on it, and pressing open part. And before we add the ribs, we want to actually add the screw holes, so we can screw these two halves together. Now if we look at those standoffs, we don't really have a flat area to use for the whole wizard because the cut is angled there. So we could either straighten off these standoffs, or we can use just a different flat face for the whole wizard. So we can actually start the hole on a different face, but still line it up on the standoffs. So let's go to the whole wizard. And firstly, let's set the type of hole. Let's go to a straight type hole, and unsymmetric, we want the size to be M4. And then for the end condition, let's go blind 30mm, then click on the position step and we can set where these holes actually are. Then we need to choose a flat face. We can actually choose the edge of the cut out here, because that was a flat area. It was totally horizontal on the cutting line. So click on that face once to select it, and then don't place any holes yet, but press normal too. And then we can use the standoffs to line up where we want the holes. So we've got one on the left, and we've got another one on the right. And if you look in 3D, we can see the depth of the hole is pretty good there. It goes all the way into the standoff, even though we've got that angle cut on it. So press OK, and we've added those two tapped holes. Now we can go on to the ribs. Now, ribs are very common in engineering and product design. You can find them a lot in plastic parts, and they are usually used to make parts stronger, but without adding much weight or material. To make ribs, we can use the rib feature, but it doesn't always work very well. We'll have a very quick look at the feature now, and then we'll have a look at a different way of making ribs after that. To use the rib feature, first you have to sketch where you want the ribs to be. So I'm going to start a sketch on this flat part of the face in the middle, and I'm just going to sketch a straight line that goes up from the middle of the wall at the bottom here to the middle at the top. And then I'm going to select the rib tool, just by going to features, rib. Now we can set the parameters on the left. So we want to choose mid plane, which is this option. We'll set the thickness as 2mm. And then we can set the direction. So if we look at the preview, this arrow is actually going to the right at the moment. This is the direction of the rib, but we want it to go down into the body. So we can change the extrusion to right on the left. And now that little arrow is going down into the body. And if we press OK, rib is made. So basically, where we draw that line, a rib is added down to the next feature in the model. So that looks fine for that one single ribs. But we actually want ribs that go all the way through the part. So let's try drawing a rib further off to the side. I'm going to start a sketch on this upper face instead. So it's the outer part of the split cut there. And I'm just going to try drawing a rib. Maybe something like this. And then let's try this with the rib feature. So we've still got 2mm mid plane selected. I'm gonna flip the direction, so we're going down into the body. So everything looks kind of similar to the first rib we made, so this should work properly. But then when we press OK, it says the rib is not bounded properly. And that's because we've got these angled edges. So with the rib feature, the plane that we are sketching on is the top point of the rib. And you can almost think of the ribs sort of like a liquid or water. So this lower rib will work, because the water is sort of held in by those walls. But this upper rib, because we've got that angled wall, the water or the liquid will fall over the edge, so it's not bounded properly. So in this case, the rib feature won't work for what we need. It can be a really useful feature. If you've got a simple cut, you can easily use it to make a lot of ribs. But in our case here, it's not going to work properly for us. So I'm just going to close that feature, and I'm going to delete those two rib features, and we'll have a look at different way of making ribs. So first we need to throw the sketch with the ribs in. So I'm going to select that outer face again, that's the highest cut face in the model. So now we're just going to normal too, and I'm going to throw some lines for the ribs. It's really up to you where you place them, depending on the shape of your model. But we want to keep out of the circular areas because that's where the joystick and the buttons are. So firstly I'm going to add a circle here, around where the buttons are. So I'm going to get the circle tool. I'm going to try and pick up a circular edge there. So some of the edge isn't exactly circular, because of the way that it was filleted. So if you can't pick up that center point of the circle, then just try using another segment of the circle. And then when you've got it, let's draw a circle there. And let's set it as 40mm diameter. Now we are going to throw some straight ribs going up to the edges of the model. To make sure that the ribs turn onto the curved parts of the wall properly, first we are just going to draw a slightly offset line that we can use to connect the ribs to. So right click on any of the outer edges of the controller, and then press select tangency. This now selects the entire outer loop, then go to offset entities. We want to offset 1mm, and we want to go inwards, so we want to offset a line that's in the middle of that cut line all the way around. And then just before we press OK, for the construction geometry here, let's choose offset. So this means the line that we are offsetting will be a construction line. Press OK. 
now we've got the construction line that's halfway between the wall all the way around and we can use this to connect a rib line too so get the line tool so i'm going to throw a rib down the middle here from the midpoint to the midpoint make sure you start and end on that construction line that we just made then i'm going to make one go horizontal from the origin out to that circle we just drew and then i'm gonna do another horizontal one down here so again make sure you're going from the construction line to the construction line and i'm just going to add a distance here of 65 millimeters And then finally, I'm just going to do something up to the standoff. If our rib joins that circular face of the standoff directly at the circle, then it could cause a problem with a zero thickness error. So we are going to extend the rib slightly inside the circle. And to help with this, we are going to offset another line. So I'm going to select that standoff face. I'm going to choose offset entities. I'm going to offset 1mm inside. And I'm going to make it for construction. Then I'm going to get the line tool again. I'm going to draw a line vertically down from the very bottom center of that construction circle. And I'm going to finish it on that construction line at the bottom. And then I'm just going to add one more line up here, going from the construction circle up to the solid circle. So we can join the solid circle directly, because that's all going to be extruded together. We can't join an existing circular body right on the edge, otherwise it could cause us that zero thickness problem. And then we can just add an angle here to define that. So it's really up to you what kind of ribs you add, depending on the spacing inside your model. So now I'm just going to mirror this over to the other side. So I'm going to select all of those solid line, except that vertical one in the middle. Then I'm going to press mirror entities, and for the mirror about point, we can actually choose that center of vertical line. So it doesn't have to be construction line, it can just be a solid line. So let's choose that, press OK. And now we've mirrored those lines over to the other side. We are now ready to use all these lines to create our ribs. So I'm going to go features, extrude it ball space, and we are going to use a thin feature. So if we go down here and select a thin feature, this means we can extrude single lines instead of closed profiles. So firstly, let's set the distance to 2 mm. Let's change the type to mid plane. So if we look from the top previously, we were on one direction. This means we extrude in one direction out from the line. If we go mid plane, then we extrude equally in both directions. And then for the selected contours, let's just choose all of those solid lines. So it should be two circles, and then all of the straight lines. It should look something like this. Let's change the direction, so extruding down towards the control. And then let's choose up to the body. And let's just choose that controller body. And then when you press OK, we should have some ribs like this. And if you have any issues with zero thickness or anything like that, try to make sure that where your lines join the outside of the shell, they are actually connected to that construction line, not to the inside or the outside of the wall. So now our ribs are looking OK, but obviously they are too high in the middle here, so we need to cut away there. This is fairly easy to do. First I'm just going to rename that feature as ribs. And I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane. I'm going to right click on one of the outer edges of the cut. And I'm going to press select tangency. And that will select the entire loop. Then I can press convert entities. So we've basically projected that entire cut edge onto the plane that we are sketching on. We can now use that line to make a cut. So I'm going to go features, extruded cut. We are still on thin feature because we've just got a line there. We don't have a closed profile. And I'm going to choose through all both. And if you look from the end, we want to be cutting down through the ribs. We don't want to be cutting up through the body of the controller. So we want to cut downwards like this. Press OK to make that cut. And you should get a pop-up asking which bodies you want to keep. So two selected bodies. We just want to keep that main body. We don't want to keep those ribs that were cut away. So it's probably going to be the first option here. Just choose that main body. And then press OK. And now if we spin around, we can see we've cut those ribs and they are all cut at correct angles. So we can rename this feature as rib cut and we can save that bar. To recap this video, 
we started off by cutting those depth holes. We didn't have a flat face on top of the standoffs, but we used a different flat face for the whole wizard. And then we just lined the holes up with the standoffs from above. We had a very quick look at the rip feature. We found it can be useful if you've got a single cut or a straight cut. It doesn't really work in our case here because we've got those angled edges, so instead we made the rip pipes the thin feature. First, you just throw the sketch of the ribs you want and then just go to extruded post piece, choose a thin feature, and select the contours that you want to extrude. So that was all of the solid lines in this case. We then just set the thickness, we set the type is mid plane, and we extruded up to body. And then finally we cut away the excess part of the ribs from the side. So we just started to sketch on the appropriate plane. We selected the entire outer loop of the cut, and then we converted that, and then we used that to make a cut through all, and we just kept the main body. In the next video, we'll add those ribs to the bottom part, and it will be a bit easier because we can reuse the sketch that we already have. Thank you for watching, hopefully it can help a little, and can be useful.